Hi, Kiki here, and today I want to give you a couple of my favorite classroom management techniques for uh, doing coding exercises in the computer lab. One of the things that I feel very strongly about is letting students help other students solve problems. If I'm walking through a computer lab and the sounds I hear are all, Miss Kiki, Miss Kiki, Miss Kiki, not only does that panic and stress me out, but it panics and stresses the other students out because they can also hear that and hear that, that something is difficult and maybe they should feel like they are struggling. So what I will do is I will give the students uh, different colored cups uh, or post-it notes and you can have uh, three different colors. You got a red which means I need help. You have a yellow which means I think that I need help and you have a green which means I've got this. If you need help I can help you. Then we have the students kind of keep track of where they are with things using those cups. If they get to a place where they're really, really struggling, they should try something on their own and fail three times before they ask a classmate. Now ideally they're pair programming, so it's not just a classmate they're asking, they're asking a pair of other classmates. And that pair of classmates will then help them understand what they know or help them troubleshoot, uh, help the students troubleshoot what's going on on their computer. Now they shouldn't touch the other students' computers, but they can verbally say, oh, you have that block out of place. Keep in mind, we don't perceive this as cheating because in elementary school, if we can get their brains going, get them to think about what they did wrong, so that next time they understand the answer, that is a valid form of learning. So a, a student might be stuck, they try themselves and fail three times, and then they can ask a, a pair, and then that pair comes and helps them, they can try and fail three times, and at that point, if they're still stuck, then they can change their cup to red, and I as the teacher will come around, see the red cups, and help each person individually. Not only does that uh, keep the stress level in the room down, but it means that the students' hands are free to continue trying to solve the problem on their own. And very often while they're doing that, they do figure out the solution before I get to them with their cup. So that is one of my favorite tips. Another tip that I like to use is the wind down method. So at code.org, we think that students should have an opportunity to think about what they learned. And we do like to stop students early and have them do a little journaling or at least classroom reflection. But it can be very jarring and uh, disheartening to a student to be stopped and then go right into this reflection period because uh, oftentimes they're so engaged that they have trouble kind of coming out of that. So it really is helpful to start giving them warnings at five minutes. Give them a five minute warning, tell them to finish the puzzle they're on, and then start the logout process. After that, a two minute warning, and then a one minute warning. At that point, you can have students start writing in their journals as you go around and make sure everybody is logged off. Or you can bring everybody's attention back to you so that you can have that, that classroom discussion. Now you heard me talking about the journal. The journal is something that we believe is very important to learning computer science in a computer lab type environment. When students need to problem solve, it can be very difficult if all they have is the problem on their screen. It can help them to kind of draw the problem down or draw movements of things they think they should happen. Uh, if the kids are a little bit older, they can write down predictions. Here's what I think will happen. Here's what actually did happen. Why was it different? Those things are all very, very helpful. Plus, they can be writing down solutions. They can be writing down uh, different combinations of blocks that do different things. So when they get to programs later on, they can flip back to those and see how they solved similar problems. Those are three of my very favorite computer tips for uh, really any kind of, of education that happens on the computer, but definitely keep them in mind. I hope that you find them helpful. 
If you did find this helpful, please click the like button so I know you want to see more videos like this in the future. Please subscribe to my channel. It helps me out greatly and allows me to continue bringing you videos like these. And press the little alarm bell so that you know when there's a new video ready for you to watch. Until next time, happy coding.